Hey, this is Brittany Wagner with Last Chance You, and you're listening to Out of Bounds Detroit Sports. Sports Radio Detroit dot com. We don't need TV to entertain us. <laughs> he said anus. They're 74. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. This is the team that at one point uh, traded for uh, Tim Tebow to make him a tight end. So we'll see, we'll see what their kinds of a tight end they just is. don't know what a tight end they is. They don't. Lady Cops. Hot or not? How big are the cans? When they're wearing their uniforms, it's kind of a hide rack situation, right? Dan was really depressed about the game on Saturday. He went out, got in a, got in some yeah, got in some I ruckus, got some, had some trouble. I met a lady cop. I was drunk and disorderly, nude. Drunk and disorderly, the story of an Irish sports fan coming this fall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, welcome. Out of Bounds Detroit Sports, David Fays, Jeff Mel, and myself, Dan Griffin, invading your ear hole as always on SportsRadioDetroit.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever the hell you listen to podcasts. Please leave us a rating, a review, and tell your friends. We always appreciate you telling a friend. Just going over the download numbers before we started the show, and they're great. Better than fucking cornflakes, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, frosted flakes. That's what I wanted. I, say, I don't really yeah. like cornflakes yeah. anyway, so I'm not a I'm not a big cereal guy in general. But all right, I don't I don't eat a lot of cereal. That's either. awesome. We're winging this show. <laughs> I tried to but started, started with a cereal comment right, right before right right before we started the show. I showed the guys here my notes, and it's about they're about seven lines. Brought long. to you by Grape Nuts. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we do give out way. Is too it many, a cereal? Too, way too much free advertising on the show. What's that? I said, <laughs> is it a cereal? I don't really know. <laughs> Grape nuts. Not when Free it's, advertising. Not when it's hot. Sponsored by great, <laughs> Grape Nuts. Grape Nuts. <laughs> isn't, that the, isn't that the cereal you turn to when you're like officially an old man? I don't know, man. Raisin Bran. Oh, my God. I know a guy. I eat Raisin Bran. I know Raisin a guy. Raisin Bran's good. I know a guy who's in like his late 40s, and I'm starting to find weird cereal around his house. There's something going on in his life. Yeah. I keep, I keep are changing. Seeing, I keep seeing the Raisin Brands and the Grape Nutses of the world. He's not eating concentrated I li- sugar I like anymore. That, uh, I like that Raisin Bran Crunch. That's the good one. Yeah. We got the little crunch of like oats and honey. Whatever's That's high in fiber. Good. That's pretty it's, good it's, You start seeing guys going away from <laughs> sugar to high in fiber. It's a switch. <laughs> Somebody's constipated. Uh, I mean, the guy just had hernia surgery, so he's probably, Ouch. That's probably, rough. Probably feeling I've, pretty old. I've been there. It's not an enjoyable experience. Oh. You've had a lot of weird surgeries. What the hell's the matter with you? I don't know if they're you? all weird surgeries. We had the one where they where they had a, they, where they had to saw your head off or whatever from the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they gave me a new brain. It's not as good as the last one. <laughs> oh, that's what happened. Yeah, they just saw your. Well, you've had your throat sawn open. You've had hernia surgery. Yeah. Had a few, I've had I've had a number of things. I've had one surgery in my entire life, and it was a surgery that I didn't even necessarily need. I had to like get my ad- my dentist told me or like my orthodontist told me I had to get my adenoids removed or he wasn't gonna give me braces. I don't know what the hell the two have to do with each what? other. What? Yeah, I don't know. It had something to do with my overbite. Were you or in something. Mexico? <laughs> I no. It had something to do with yeah, like right. my overbite or something. I don't know what the, the hell. Filipino it was. doctor who was in the back of a meat shed. Uh, no, we, we actually left that dentist because he charged too much <laughs> fucking money. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's probably, yeah. probably, yeah. probably he also in sells with people an e- with an eyes, ears, nose, and throat doctor yeah, too. He, then. He, he sells Bingo. people parts on the black market, Bingo. just taking out body parts. <laughs> he needed off. those. There's some Mexican. He needed those adenoids. My adenoids somewhere. Yeah, yeah, he needed those adenoids. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got news for you. That would be the weirdest thing ever because who the fuck puts adenoids back in? <laughs> No, they're a completely useless organ. They're hot on the hot market right now. I need yeah, adenoids. Gotta get to it. The adenoid black market. Let's see how much they're going for. Somebody Google that yeah. shit. Oh how much do adenoids God. go for? You, no, honestly, no, seriously, Google right, that. I'll see. Google how much do adenoids go for on the black market. I really want to see adenoids. what comes up. And we're going to get flagged. <laughs> Why? These are how much do sacrificial adenoids cost? worth a velvet painting of a whale and a dolphin getting it off. 
sacrificial adenoids. That's what it says. So there's like some religion out there that actually uses adenoids in some sort of a a, a crazy oh, a religious ceremony. It's a no- it's a nodes. Did you spell adenoids correctly? Because I don't know how to spell that word. I have um, no idea. I don't know. I'm gonna just sound it out. Adenoids. <laughs> Oh, there it is. The what am I doing? Red dog. Uh, I'm just, it's adenoids. T- 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 today, Junior. There it is. Cost. <laughs> this is only sur- surgery. The second one down is in India, which is hilarious. People are. How many rupees are they charging for uh, adenoid removal in the in in uh, India? I take them out. It's between five to seven thousand um, dollars. Here, that's not that much. Wait, let me see. I mean, considering for patients I, not covered by health insurance, the typical cost of a adenoidectomy, with or without tonsillectomy, is five thousand to seven thousand, including surgeon's fees, hospital charge, and anesthesia. Now, I can tell you what—that's not that bad. I did not think we were going to adenoids early in the show here. I thought we were saving <laughs> it for later. You know, this is su- what happens when I have seven lines you know of notes. Surg- you know how many surgeries I've had? Big old goose egg. No surgeries. Everything's in my body that started with my body. I've had, I've had Except my teeth. I've had four. My baby teeth fall out. <laughs> <laughs> you still have your wisdom teeth? I still have my wisdom teeth. Me, me too. Yeah, I've, I've had four. That's crazy. You are falling apart, David Faye. I was close. I was close to having surgery. You are just a mess. That's, uh, that's what happened to you mentally. Separated a shoulder and got fluid, but fluid went away on its own, so I didn't have to have surgery to have it removed. Got my Got my chest ripped apart. Got Dave, we don't have time to stop at the boom boom room for the midday shift. <laughs> You're going to be late for the podcast again. <laughs> she stutter, she stutters a lot. Certainly tonight. That, Why does she stutter all the time? That, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a bad one. All right, you're just going to the quick trip to the boom boom room. Yeah, I don't I don't understand why she was still stutter stuttering though. Not my problem. I think the whoever takes adenoids out gets a double dip because they get to charge you for the surgery and they sell them. It's a, Easy ten G's. Does, <laughs> does, Matt, does, does, does Matt Patricia take adenoids out? Because I see now you're on a Matt Patricia. No, search. I moved. I moved over. Okay. No, just, yeah, but we're uh, we're to see what the latest news is. We're on hard Patricia watch tonight. Seriously. Yeah. We do have breaking news about Matt Patricia. He's still in New England. <laughs> he still has uh, not officially agreed to be Detroit Lions head coach. Yep. <laughs> in case you were wondering. No, this whole damn thing is ridiculous because we came on the show Monday and we're talking about it being a fucking foregone conclusion that Matt Patricia is going to be the next head coach of the Detroit Lions. And then goddamn yesterday, Wednesday, or was it Tuesday? I don't remember. It was um, it was Wednesday. or Yeah, it was yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday because the show didn't go up till late Tuesday. That's right because I had, we had some internet problems, so we apologize for that. But... Uh, Late Tuesday, or Wednesday, Matt Patricia is all of a sudden, well, now maybe he's going to the Giants because he's from there and his wife's from there and they like the area and uh, he, I, I don't know, he grew up a Giants fan or something. I don't fucking know. But all of a sudden now, solid possibility he's going to the Giants and then uh, our boy Berkey last night, Dave Burkett, tweets out that, no, don't believe it, here we go. Matt Patricia is expected to be your next head coach of the Detroit Lions. So what do we so what do we believe? And what is this? Is this some sort of strange media ploy, or is this you know Matt Patricia and from his the agent? New York media? I would never yeah. expect. Yeah, that. it comes out in the goddamn New York Post, and we're supposed to believe it. And so you know, is this is this an issue of somebody at the New York Post being engaging in piss poor journalism again, or you know, is this? Is this a ploy by Matt Patricia and his agent to, I don't know, maybe squeeze a few extra shekels on the Lions? I find that very difficult to believe, the the, the squeezing for money thing, because I, I don't I really don't think in the situation that he's in, he's gonna be a first time head coach. I, I, I highly doubt that Bob Quinn is going to lowball him on an, on an offer. And I don't think he's going to try to squeeze somebody who by all intents and purposes, from everything we understand, are, is as genuinely a, a friend of his. Yeah, I don't think but he would that's do that. that's very that's very delightful, Dave, of you, Dave, because you it know, does, doesn't make there's no need to do it. But while, while they might be friends, it's still business. And if Matt Patricia's got an opportunity to you know get an extra year or get an extra mill or two a year, million bucks, if, if he winds up in New York, it is not going to be a money problem. I can promise you that. Yeah. There's no way in hell it's going to be a money money decision. It's so, just not. 
So you think that if the Lions uh, offer him more, he would still go to New York? If he really wants to go to New York, yes. Yes. <sighs> See, I think he's taking the dough. I don't. But I'm a cynic. I'm a cynical asshole. Everything's about the money for these people. Yeah, there's an article that came out three hours ago in the New York Daily News about, about why Patricia is the man for the Giants and not McDaniels. Well, see, that's the funny thing is I don't think – like I also read something uh, in the time since we've been uh, over here tonight that says that the final three candidates for that job, according to everybody, is Patricia, McDaniels, and Shermer, which might be 100% accurate. Yeah. Uh, but – it doesn't look like Wilkes is getting the job. I don't think Wilkes is going to. Somebody said that Wilkes is going to be a, like a fallback option for somebody who doesn't get their guy, but I honestly have a feeling that other people already have fall, their, all, their, their fallback option already decided, and I don't think it's Steve Wilkes. Is there Wilkes. anybody that you're hearing that's dying for Pat Shermer? No. I mean, there, there are teams that are interested, of course. Uh, they're, they're, he's, he's, a, he's a legit finalist for at least a couple of yeah, jobs. Yeah, he is ultimate fallback guy. He will probably get one of these jobs, but it is going to be after the top candidate for all of these jobs, which so far is Patricia. That is the domino that needs to fall before all the other job dominoes fall. Because I think once Patricia hires somewhere, now Shermer's going to move up that list for somebody, and then you're going to have the he might. I think honestly, he might be the next guy that everybody. Fa- he's going. He might be the next domino to fall. Who Shermer? Shermer. Well, here, here's, not McDaniel's. Here's Shermer. the thing with Sh- well, I, I I can almost pinpoint where I think both those guys are going to wind up. To be honest with you, I think McDaniel's uh, unless something crazy happens, I think McDaniel's is going to wind up with the Colts. I think that's the way they're leaning. That that's a fit. It's a good fit there because they'll be going in with a with a, a you know established quarterback. I know Andrew Luck's coming off injury, but you just assume he's he's going to come back. He's going to be all right. And that's as as a coaching candidate, that's a guy you really want to go to bat. Uh, you know, go uh, going to war with. And then I, I actually think, you know, you say he think he's going to be a fallback option. I, I don't think Shermer's going to be a fallback. I think Shermer is going to wind up in Arizona, and I think that's going to be the guy that Arizona wants. I think they're going to go with an offensive guy, and outside of McDaniels, he's really the only offensive-minded guy that's out there. We've yeah. got news from the Patricia Watch. We've just gotten word here at the uh, Out of Bounds Detroit Sports News Desk that Matt Patricia just pulled a piece of licorice out of his beard. So that's oh, it. Wonderful. That's what we've got now. And, and and then I think Patricia is just basically going to be able to, which, I mean, it doesn't uh, vary at all from what is already kind of being reported, but I think Patricia is going to decide between the Lions and, and the Giants. And I, I genuinely don't know which way it's going to go, but as we were talking off air before we started the show, I still – have a pretty good feeling about it. I still, I'm at, I'm at like 85 percent that he's well, still going to wind there's up. There's a couple reasons why, because I know uh, Jeff. We talk about this a lot, and the, the arguments that Jeff likes to get in on social media, which are kind of hilarious, and sometimes I watch them. <laughs> but you, know, you got in, a, in, a, in some sort of a stupid tampering argument with some turd on social media, and as far as you know, well, the the, the Lions can't know that, uh, or nobody can know that Patricia is going to be the next head coach of any team because it would be considered tampering, right? Yeah, which yeah. Is I n- guess technically that's true, but there's no way you can avoid some sort of wink, wink, nod, nod agreement. It happens all the time. And what we were yeah. talking about was, you know, if that's the case, and there's some sort of wink, wink, nod, nod agreement between Patricia and the Giants. Why would the Lions not hire somebody else? And that's and that's exactly the, the other argument. Why is, would they not be so hard looking at if, another option? If, yeah, if they knew and, already and that he was going to be gone, they would be hiring somebody. It also goes the other way with the Giants as well. Like if they knew the Lions, wink, wink, nod, nod, what's going on? Like it's a done deal. Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia are, are going to be paired up. It's pretty much common knowledge. Uh, then the Giants, you would think. Would at least be tar- you'd be see them you'd see more rumors target them targeting somebody else. Well, the weird thing too is like it sounds like the uh, the Giants are planning on doing a second round of interviews with people, um, you know, with their with their top candidates. But it doesn't sound like the it does not sound like the Lions are going to do that. Well, the Lions it sounds like the Lions have kind of decided on where they're the where Lions they're going. can only do that with Shermer, Shermer, and Patricia. No, wait, not Shermer either. They they can well neither of those guys can interview again until after their teams are done. 
Right. Yeah. So, so the guy, the guys, the lines are really this, the only guy they could do a second interview with that is, by any stretch of the imagination, in, still even involved at all in the discussions is Mike Mike Vrabel. And if I think or, if Mike Vrabel was going to be the guy, he'd already be the guy. Or Jim Bob Cooter, which well, that's not going to be not going to happen. No. And, but, and why do you, why do you, why would you need to do a second interview with him anyway? You don't. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you interviewed him the first time just so, to help own, hone your that's own. That's the other thing that's driving me nuts, Jeff. We were talking about this while we were outside sucking down a cancer stick. <laughs> This this whole this whole rumor coming out of Allen Park, which just seems to be getting stronger about how much this organization wants to keep Jim Bob Cooter, and th- th- that just scares the hell out of me because that that's something that just screams vintage, typical Detroit Lions. Let's not do things the way things are supposed to be done, and let's we. And, and, but here's the other thing too: I don't know what it is that they see. Is there what am I missing? What am I missing that 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 that, that this organization thinks that this guy is so good that they just have to have him because around your, again. Because your 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 franchise quarterback has played the best football of his career. Under, and I and look, I understand we always go back to the argument. It's because he's coming to it, coming of age. I get that, and that is a hundred percent accurate. There's a lot of truth to that. But you can't you can't discredit that the system he's playing in now has made him play his best football. No, but that's not it. I don't give a shit about how how, how much improved he's been on the field. He Matthew Stafford has not done even close to enough in his career to even be involved in a conversation regarding any of his coaching staff. Now, Bob Quinn can go to Matthew Stafford and say, hey, do you like this guy? Yeah, okay, thanks, bye. Like, that's all I need to know. Yeah. Matthew Stafford does not have the right to go to walk into Bob Quinn's office and and, and, and say that he he just has to have a guy around or, or this guy has to stay or else. What else, Matthew? Well, well, You're going to be here. I would kick Matthew Stafford out of my office so fucking fast. Why do you think he's doing that? I don't necessarily, but that's kind of what you're suggesting, that Ma- the reason Jim Bob Cooter is going to stay around is because Matthew Stafford likes him so much. Matthew no, no, Stafford no, no. shouldn't that's have an not, opinion. That was not my point. That was not my point at all. I'm talking about the straight facts of, of his gameplay, not that he likes him, which we all know is the truth. He does like him, and he has stated that to yeah. media. But that Bob Quinn, if, you're if saying that's your franchise quarterback, and Bob Quinn obviously is tying himself to, to Matthew Stafford, and rightfully so. He's, he's played very well. They gave him a big contract. You're, you're, Bob Quinn is, is the looking worst guy to tie yourself. You're, to. Yes. <laughs> no, you're saying you're saying that they would want to keep Jim Bob Cooter because they've noticed an improvement in Matthew Stafford. Correct. That's what you're saying. Correct. Okay. I still don't like that because this is still a, a situation where when a head coach comes in, he brings his guys. If Matthew Stafford had gone out and, I don't know, uh, single-handedly won a few games this year or had, uh, I don't know, by himself maybe carried this team to a, a playoff appearance and even if they had lost again, I'd be, I would be I would maybe get a little bit more on board with that. But for you to sit here and say that Jim, or, or for this organization to sit here and say that Jim Bob Cooter is so good that we have to keep him and Matthew Stafford still is Five for a fucking lifetime against good teams. Still hasn't won a playoff game. Still hasn't carried uh, this team on his back to a division championship. I don't understand how you could possibly think that Jim Bob Cooter is is, is this special that you have to keep him right. It's not like it's not like this is Drew Brees we're talking about. It's not like this is one of these elites that we're talking about. You 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 could uh, you could say that. In that situation, but Matthew Stafford still hasn't won anything. Well, yeah. Could, could, well, and could it, but I want to say this though too. Could it not? Could it not also play a, a factor that your head coach for the last four years, who I truly believe Sh- left sure. this left this team in a in a better overall spot than they than they than it was when he got, got here. Now, some of that is Bob Quinn as well. Not, uh, but I still think Jim Caldwell had did some good things. Not clearly nowhere near enough good things. But is it not possible that your that head coach was just so much of a walking Lincoln log that maybe he didn't get the best out of your quarterback? That's kind of look like a Lincoln log. Well, not the best. I mean, and, and, and made enough mistakes that cost you enough football games that okay. you should have won. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, you also don't want – okay, you want an offensive coordinator, but you don't want a Matthew Stafford coordinator. And, but like, you want a guy who can manage a run game. I was get hundred yards. That was going to yeah. be. That was no, going to be the, the, that's the, be the that's next. That's the big point. fault of Jim Bob. Like if, if he if he had a if Matthew Stafford threw for thirty eight hundred yards and thirty touchdowns and 
seven picks, and they had a thousand yard rusher, and they yeah, were yeah. top five offense in the league. And the defense was just so terrible, and Jim Caldwell's bad managing just all happened to work out to where you went nine and seven. You're like, well, we're keeping this guy. This guy knows how to run an well, offense, yeah, and they're yeah. killing it, right? It's, it's just That's been, not the it's, case. It's, but he is, in other words, Jim Bob Cooter's body of work has been. So, Far too mediocre for you to value him this much. Now, like you said, Dave, some of that could be the fault of him being at the behest of Jim Caldwell. And but, and the injuries. The sure. The fact that they didn't have an offensive line that part. played more than, you know, they played, what, 10% of the snaps together let, the let, entire let, time? Let's say this. Didn't let, have a running back? I mean, yeah, they're, they're let, terrible. Let's been, say this. When it comes to the run game, if Jim Bob Cooter's running attack or the Lions running attack, however you want to put it, had, have, had, had some semblance of... Uh, of being a legitimate NFL rushing attack, which it has not been for multiple years now. If he had, if it improved and been a, a decent enough weapon to be able to supplement the pass game, nobody would have any issue. And I, again, I still think it is an odd thing to talk about keeping a coordinator when you're hiring a coach. However, if that had been the case. I don't think anybody would have a real issue with that with that going down right now. Is it's, there precedent for this? Has anybody done this before? I, I mean, I, well, the probably, Lions, probably. Lions, the Lions, uh, you know fired their manager and kept their coach. <laughs> I mean, they basically did the same thing on a higher level. They got rid of... That's a little different, They, they got rid of their general manager and kept Jim Caldwell. That's a little... That, that, Why? It's a little The guy different. above because, him... Because, what, okay, the, no, because there's the a separation. Argument. There's a separation between GM and coach. There's no separation between head coach and his coaching staff like that's that is a regime that you One throw entity. you always yeah, throw yeah, yeah. the baby out with the bathwater in that fucking situation well, clearly not in this case and it's i think it's un- I, I would love to see another place where it's happened now i know there was dick lebeau but that was also because bill cower retired yeah. Okay, Bill Cowher wasn't blown out because yeah. he had just yeah. shitty season. And Dick LeBeau is one of the greatest defensive minds in the history of the game. He's still yeah. in Tennessee, is he not? Is he not there right now? I think he is. Yeah, he is. So that's one case, but it's different because uh, Bill Cowher wasn't fired. He walked away. And then Mike Tomlin came in and said, uh, you mean I get one of the greatest defensive minds of all time on my coaching staff? Yeah, yeah I'll, I think I'll, I'll keep that yeah, guy. I, of course. So that's that's different, but that's really Plus even they the hired from within of. with Tomlin anyway. Right. You know what I mean? So they really just jumped Tomlin over LeBeau. And, and if Dick LeBeau wasn't 80 years old at the time, he probably would have gotten a job. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't even, you know, it's funny. It's Dick LeBeau was one of those weird guys. I don't think he ever wanted to be a head coach. No. He was just I'm really good at what I do. I'm just going to get paid a lot to do it. And he just did it. Yeah. He said, you got to love Dick LeBeau. You got to love Dick LeBeau. He's in the Lions Ring of Honor. He should be. Guy's a legend. What if were you looking up, it, Dave? If only he could. Nothing. Yeah, if only oh, he could have been, been, if only he could have been here, yeah. But, that would have been nice. You know, Austin leaves. I thought it was kind of ridiculous how much shit Austin got. Um, you know, I saw a lot of shit about him not being a good coach. And, yeah, like, but and that's the other thing, too. If you are if you are going to keep Jim Bob Cooter and you're so in on him, the, if, if, if I'm going to pick one of the two coordinators to be in on, we got to keep this guy, if I'm forced to choose, I'm not choosing either of them. Yeah, I'm choosing the one that everybody seems to want. Yeah, I think I'm keeping Terrell Austin. <laughs> well, Everyone well, I, says is a really good coach. That's, and that's a valid argument, and I get that point. But I also think when you're talking about the Lions coaching search, it's it's pretty clear, whether it's Patricia or one of the other couple of guys, it's pretty clear the Lions are, are, are very much favoring a defensive-minded guy. And in that case... Y- y- uh, first of all, so, that, so what? You that, get a great guy defensive probably, coach and a good D coordinator. That, well, good that to me. guy is probably going to do a lot of the game calling on the defensive side of the football, more than likely. Uh, and and th- secondly, I think that guy more more even so than on the offensive side of the ball, that guy's going to want his own people in place on defense because he has a system that he wants to run. Yeah. And that's why that's why I I can I can understand that mentality. And I think they're going to flip I get it. defensive schemes if they hire. They Matt very Patricia. well may. They very well may. If they hire Matt Patricia, I think they're going to flip schemes. They might not do it right away. They'll probably go from like a a four three hybrid three four to then make. Oh, it, you got to bring back the old eighty five Bears forty six defense. Yeah, make it more of a, a hybrid. Uh, you know, got three, the fridge four. in there. But <laughs> I mean, it's it's interesting. It's it's a fun coaching search. This screams Ken Wizen Hunt, Jim Caldwell all over again. You know, yeah, Lions, well, Lions just, really want one guy. Every, the fans, the, the you know, everybody's saying they really want one guy. No one wants Jim Caldwell, and then the one guy bolts for another team. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny Caldwell. too because you know a lot of people are trying to make parallels to that search, and you know, there's reasons why that why that makes sense to to have that you know, make that argument. But you know, it's it's weird because I think this is very much a, a different case because I I truly believe it's going to be. 
it's going to be a first-time guy either way. I think it's either Patricia, who is obviously the odds-on favorite. He's the guy if he if he's willing to come here. Or I think it's Mike Vrabel. Cause I, but are, are the Lions one step behind on that? I don't, that, we that, don't, that, we don't that know. Seems we to don't be, know. That's the common trend, right? These first-time coaches. And it's working out or it's not working out. Well, I mean, I mean, if you fire Jim Caldwell last year, you might have had a chance to bring Sean McVay and, to and this And look, team. We, we have no idea yeah, what's no, going to work out. I mean, no, nobody was The there. odds of getting a Sean McVay, a guy who wasn't even a co- ever a coordinator. I'm just saying. McVay, no, McVay was a coordinator for three years. No, he was the quarterback coach for three years. He was the offensive He's, coordinator for the last he skipped, two years he before. He skipped being a coordinator, I'm he pretty was, sure. He was a coordinator for two years. Where? In Washington. He was quarterback's coach first, and then he was coordinator. I don't know about that. There's a yeah, lot you can of look guys it up. who he do is. that, though. Trust me. There's a lot of guys who skip. Oh, don't the trust me. I don't care. Whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt my feelings. We'll find out now, won't we? Yeah. There. I mean, look. Look at the guy. Um. Um. Who is his? Uh, the guy who he's, he hasn't gotten a job, but the guy from uh, the quarterbacks coach from Philly was getting a couple job interviews. Mm-hmm. He's never been anything above a quarterbacks coach. Oh, he was for Washington. And he was getting. He got a couple different job interviews this year. Now, granted, there was probably a long shot he was going to get a job, but what that means is more than likely. That's a guy who's going to be in that in that list of candidates next year when there's inevitably coaching changes, as there always is, and maybe he'll get a job next year. But he's not going to be an offensive coordinator before that. So it, it happens all the time. There's it, it, Coaches come in all shapes and sizes, literally. And, you know, there, it, there is no way to uh, quantify who's going to be successful. There's just no way to do it. You can make the best educated guess possible and say, all right, this guy has all the possible tools to be good. But is he gonna be good? There's no idea to know unless he does it. You know. So, what I- so I mean, Matt, we I think we all are on board with the idea of Patricia. I think we all think that he has all of the tools to be successful. But do we know if he's gonna be good? Not, not. We don't know. We don't. We don't know a damn thing. That's why I don't get overexcited or upset unless it's a, unless it's a crazy retread. Like I said, like if you were to hire a Mike Smith. Or you know, they, one of those they don't seem to be even putting any of those guys in no. the process. You know, what's, you know what's fun about Patricia? What's that? If you Google Matt Patricia right now, every article that comes up is a Giants article. Everything Giants first in every headline. It's New York. Well, it's they're the New York. Yeah. Google does not talk about Detroit apparently because <laughs> there are plenty of Matt Patricia Detroit articles. Right. Plenty by even the big places. Right. Nope, they're all giant centric. The entire first page. Yeah, it doesn't Google. surprise me at all. That's not a surprise. Breaking news and Patricia Watch is just coming in through the wire. Matt Patricia is currently taking a nap. His tidy whities on a Berber carpet. Look. Let me ask you something. Let me ask both of you guys something. And and I, to be honest with you, I haven't actually fully answered this question f- for myself yet. But let's 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 play devil's advocate here. Let's say Matt Patricia decides that he think that his you know his dream first job is with the Giants. Okay, let's say he goes to the Giants. Okay, of the two guys that I think are the most likely candidates, I think the one is stronger than the other in terms in the in the Lions' mind. But of the two candidates that would basically like be left that the Lions I think would be choosing between which would be Pat Shermer or Mike Vrabel, which guy would you mo- mo- be more interested to see be, be hired? I just, that's the thing. I don't, I can't get, I don't get excited. That's fine if you're or, not excited, uh, but. but I, I, I don't know. I can't choose because I don't care. It, it, it doesn't. They're two totally different coaches. I know in, that. In every way possible. I know that. I just, it's, it's everything that you said. We we never know. I just, I just, I wouldn't care either way. I, just, I mean, I, you know. Go sh- win me something. I don't give a shit. Shermer is, I don't think, I don't know if I would call Shermer a true retread necessarily, but I mean, I guess in the, in the sense of the word he is, he's had a head coaching job before once and not done very well. However, that was in Cleveland and who the fuck does well in Cleveland? Nobody. Yeah. There are retreads where you know who they are. Yeah. Jim Caldwell, you kind of knew who he was yeah. coming in. Mike Smith, you know who he is. There, there, there are other, there are other guys. That I'll tell you what. I, I think Cleveland fans, a, a, a like two year Wade, Wade Phillips, a two year record of is. ten and twenty three would look pretty damn good to Cleveland fans right now, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I mean, you look at what. Sure, look, I, I, again, like I said, I don't even know if I've answered this on this question for myself yet. But I, I will say the lo- the longer I've thought about it, the more that I was all aboard either the the you know obviously Patricia is my number one as well. But if it wasn't Patricia, I was all I was all about. Okay, I think if it's not Patricia, it's Mike Vrabel. But the more I thought about Shermer, there's some things to like. He he has that coaching experience. He seems to be a guy that has a good has a really good demeanor with with the players. And you look at what he did 
in Minnesota this year with an offense that they've got a few weapons, but they lost their stud running back. They're they're playing they're playing a uh, you know a, a hey. ca- Canadian Football League star in Case Keenum. I was yeah. kidding, but they're playing a third, uh, basically a third string career third string quarterback in Case Keenum, and they are they are the I would say maybe even the NFC favorite at this point, and that's a pretty amazing thing to have done. So he he had a really good year as an offensive coordinator. There's no doubt about that. So I mean, and again, that's not necessarily equate. But, you don't hey, know. Hey, you, you guys, you guys familiar with another coach uh, that had his first uh, coaching tenure in uh, Cleveland didn't do very well. Oh, yeah, his name I, is uh, Bill. <laughs> I believe his name is Bill Belichick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but Je- Jeff, what do you think? Since Dan refuses to answer the question, what, I'm not <laughs> refusing the answer. He I just, just doesn't I care. I legitimately fine. don't care. That's what, fine. Who do you want as a coach? Between who, 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 between who, who, between Shermer between those and two guys, who would you rather see them hire? If it's not Patricia, out of those two guys, which would you rather have? Oh man, and, and it's, I don't really. It's, again, it's a tough choice because they're both completely different. Well, it's a it's a tough choice because I know about one. I don't really know about the other. True. You know you know some about one. Yeah, you have I, something to go yeah, on. I have with something one to go on with one. Um, would I like a defensive coach? Yeah, I'd like a defensive coach. I think the offense is fine in Matthew Stafford's hands as long as Bob Quinn gets it right and puts the right players around him. Well, if you get Shermer, you don't have Jim Bob, I bet you. I bet Shermer fires Jim Bob. No, you blow Jim Bob out. I'd much rather have Shermer than Jim Bob any day. Get out of my face, James Robert. Anyway. Um, But, man, it's a tough call. I mean, I favor a defensive coach right now because I think this team desperately needs – a, a good defensive coach, mm-hmm. and to be able to to figure out you know a better. But does scheme. it matter if he puts a good defensive staff around himself if he's an offensive coach? I mean, no, I that's mean, why it doesn't bother me either way. No, but I mean, so, and I guess I guess it's just who can be the better leader of men, and I, I just really don't know. I mean, I've only seen you know Mike Vrabel be a defensive coordinator for one year. I don't have an issue. I don't have a fear at all that that Vrabel is not going to have command of a locker room. I don't think that'll be an issue for him at all. Um, it's just, it's just, is he? And this is the fear I have. Of, uh, this is the only fear I have with him. Not because I think he's an incompetent coach or somebody who I think is a moron. Because I, I don't think that at all. <laughs> I just wonder how strong he is in some of the X's and O's. And I know we, we, we you know, it's not something I typically hark on. But with the gla- with the guy we just fired. That was a big point of of emphasis. I think a big reason why, uh, one, well, one of several, but one big reason why he was fired again was, was, his, again, was his misleading of that, X's and O's. That can be remedied by putting the right staff around yourself. Well, that's true, but you also have to understand all things that are happening in a game, and that was where I think Caldwell was a little lack lacking. And and I I would just hope that that's Vra- because was he a, had a Hershey bar stuffed well, in his headset. Yeah, I, I don't think he knew what was I, going I, I through that. I do think Vrabel is a pretty cerebral player and always was. And he played, you know. And the the one the good thing you could say about him too is that he played a position where you really have to have strong knowledge of the whole football field as a linebacker because you got to know what's going on at all yeah. times and where to be. And I think Vrabel is a really smart guy. He played he played at a tremendous college and had really some good success there. Then he played for a couple of pretty good, pretty good pro teams. Obviously, one of them more than the other. But he played a pretty strong career for the Patriots, and then had a couple decent years at the end of his career with Kansas City. So he look he he ha- he has all he has the resume as a player, and he has has made a headway very quickly as a coach, which is usually a pretty good indicator that people believe in him. So it'll be interesting. I, I don't know which way they're going to go. I, look, like I said, we we all I think still are in agreement that barring something crazy unforeseen, Patricia is the guy. But if he chooses the Giants and the Lions have to go another direction, then I, you know, I, I think they could do a lot worse than either of those two guys. I would yeah. say that. I like, think they're actually are in decent shape in this in this coaching like, in this coaching circle. This is but. not like I don't have that same feeling that I had the Wisenhunt thing with the Wisenhunt thing because I was like I think Ken Wisenhunt is a better coach than Jim Caldwell. And <laughs> look what happens when the Titans get a quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Three years later, they're in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> Ken Wisenhunt's like. What the fuck? You give me Christian Hackenberg? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, and the, and the, no, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. And the, and the he court. drafted Zach. What was the guy? Uh, the, Zach the guy Matt Yeah, Zach Matt he, 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 he drafted him though. Yeah. He wanted that guy. He also yeah, he also had the corpse of Kerry Collins at the end of his career yeah, as well. I mean, it was so <laughs> bad, you know. And it wasn't that Kerry wasn't, Collins. That wasn't, well, and, it wasn't his choice. He wasn't the general manager. Uh, I would say he's done pretty well throughout his career as an offensive coordinator. Well, I will say that. I mean, the char- the Chargers' offense was pretty decent this year. With with uh, Wizen Hunt at the helm, so well, and Philip Rivers helps, but they, Kerry, well, Collins, yeah. Kerry Collins looked like a kind of guy that like pigged out on pork rinds. I mean, they, I mean he's no Jared Lorenzen. Lions should give <laughs> Kerry Collins a call. 
Carrie <laughs> Collins. But yeah, I j- I think I, there's like with with Wizen Carrie Hunt, Collins sounds like that nerdy kid in high school. With Wizen Hunt, I was let down that they didn't get Wizen Hunt, and then when they hired Jim Caldwell, I was, was like so angry. Fuck? I got yeah. rid of season tickets. That's how much I didn't like so, Jim Collins. So so this this coaching this cycle, coaching you're cycle, not so worried. This coaching this cycle, is going to make you want to buy tickets. Again. I favor Matt Patricia, and I think the fan base as a whole, I think, might be let down if Patricia isn't the guy. Mm-hmm. But for me personally, I, I favor Matt Patricia. I think he'll be a, a pretty good coach. I don't, I don't know how good he'll be, but I know that they're not – I don't think they're going to get much worse than they are now <laughs> under Matt Patricia. There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> and Bob Quinn, I don't think they're going to let you know let that happen. Um, but if, if they have to go Shermer or they have to go – or they decide to go with you know, with Vrabel. I'm not gonna break my heart. I'm not gonna be like, "Damn it, we just got Jim Caldwell." You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that was, I mean, that was that was a clear. Uh, I'll put it. I'll put it in this. That was a clear settling. No matter what yes. way the Lions wanted to spin it, there I was, know they wound up with him for four years, and he was okay. There was one. Well, but here's the there, was, there was one A, and then there was C, if and pa- they got C. If Patricia ends up being the guy. Be prepared for some more really tough stuff with the media. Because why? Because he's from the Belichick Patriots. tree. Yeah. 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 But here's the thing. If you win, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody cares. That's, that's it. That's, it's, it's a very simple business. It really is. It, yep. doesn't, it doesn't take a rocket and, science and, and to figure there, it out. But he is one, so it'll be fine. It's funny because <laughs> there's some like quotes out from NFL sources that like, which we'll have we would have to hear again, but the that Patricia wants to build something, he wants to do it the Patriot way, you know, mm-hmm. and that would very much signal that. How much easier is that to do with Bob Quinn, who is going to do does that the mean, Patriot does that mean, way? Does that mean Matthew Stafford will be on the injury report for the rest of yes. his career, or, or, <laughs> does, or does or does that mean he wants to go somewhere where you'd have a relatively clean slate, which in that regard would be the the, the Giants? You know what I'm saying? Because they have their. They're not in anywhere near in the same position roster wise as the Lions are yet. They don't have a they don't, don't have a quarterback know, they right have now. They have some good players. They got some good team. defensive players. I mean, they and they got Odell. Team. Yeah, they have good wide receivers. And they got Odell. They need an offensive line. No, they got three good. They need a quarterback. They got three good wide receivers. They need a running back. Uh, they have a few good defensive players. They have Land. They have Landon Collins. They have Janoris Jenkins. They have Olivier Vernon. No, they've got they've got an they've they've got a really. I mean, literally, Matthew Stafford is the only thing at the quarterback position, which is yeah. obviously the most important ba- position on the field. Where you look at it and you go, okay, the Lions are definitively uh, yeah. better. here. You're saving me a bunch of time. I would say I think they're I think they're definitely better on the offensive line too. To, regardless of the woes this year, they're still better than. Yeah, the but that Giants O line improved as that as as the, as the year went on. Now I understand they have the number over, two overall pick. They didn't have a very good year. Yeah, but it, w- once they figured out, so that, they went it, from di- diarrhea yeah. to a solid turd. Basically, That's great. basically, really once they wonderful. figured out that Eric Flowers was just a sandbag. <laughs> you know, things got a little bit better for the Giants' offensive line. Yeah, well, they, but they fine. Went, All right, I'll give you the offensive line. They went from Hershey squirts to a fake doggy. But here, but here's you know, the thing. Whatever. There's the thing. You're also talking about the difference between the Giants' offensive line and the Lions' offensive line. Yeah. Both, both pretty much garbage. The Gi- yeah. uh, Lions a little bit better. Uh, the Lions was yeah, it was it was rough. There's, um, I looked at the free agency like list of who's free agents. And there's not a lot of guys that'll knock your socks off this year. No, not a lot of like big money guys. The Lions are gonna have like forty million in cap space, like their biggest amount in like the last five years. Or maybe maybe they the lose line. it for some trades. Maybe they'll start um, they'll swing some trades this year. Your major guys, Haloti Nada, who I think is gonna be back. Um, I think will be back. I mean, I know year, he said he wants to play year, again. But I bet you I it's a two year him. deal, and the second year is an option. I bet and, you. And you know what? I, I will not be surprised at all with the fact that the last couple years of his career, and I know it's all consul- coincided with him aging, and it, it happens. But the way Bob Quinn has done so many of his deals in recent years, I will not be surprised at all if they offer him a, a very a, a low, a fairly low minimum salary with a bunch of incentives yeah, built in. Probably make him earn it. Um, to your whitehead, he gone. But he's most likely gone. Uh, yeah. We actually kind of have some sources on that now. <laughs> sort of, kind of, sort of, kind of. <laughs> we just heard some yeah, for a minute. To your whitehead, not um, likely to be back yeah. from the from what we hear. Nevin Lawson. I mean, you might want to re-sign him. He's, he, he's, you know what? I love the way he plays. He's good for a PI every game, but I'm okay with that because yeah. he plays tough on every wide out. Find play yourself games. another safety this year in Quandre Diggs. Yeah, big yeah, time. You, uh, he's not a free agent, is he? Or um, is he? Tavon Wilson is a free agent. He, they might let him so walk the idea because is, of Quandre do you Diggs. Let him walk and make Quandre Diggs. Your, I think your Quandre shape. Diggs just lays people out. Dude. He like I three, love it. He's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be the safety now. He had like three straight games of the pick. He did, and like a, a two fumble, fumble, uh, four fumbles. I'm like, damn man, 
Uh, DJ Hayden's gone. He's probably gone. Travis Swanson. Uh, I could, you know what? I think what they probably do, they probably pick between Lawson and Hayden and sign, re-sign one of them. It's more than likely I, I would what's probably happen. say they probably sign uh, um, Lawson in that deal. Travis Swanson. Gone. Gone. They're going to re-sign. Gone. They're going to get a center. Gla- no, Glasgow. Glasgow. They're going to move Glasgow over, to center. And they're going to go get a guard. He was, he was actually very highly rated by pro football focus. I, could, de- I could definitely see the money some money being spent on another guard. More often Me too. line money. Me too. Um, Paul Worlow's gone. Don Carey's gone. These are all guys. Darren Fells might get signed for cheap. Yeah, he'll be uh, cheap. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to give you guys of note. It's nobody. Greg Robinson. Oh, man, you don't want to bring Don Barclay back? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Got to bring Don Barclay back. <laughs> We'd throw another celebration party for that. Uh, restricted free agents. Restricted. restricted you, they, they're back if you want them, yeah. basically. TJ Jones, Sack Center. Do- TJ, jo- TJ Jones will be back. Sack Center, gone. Yeah, probably. Um, Kerry Hyder is exclusive. He'll be back. Rights. Um, Rudock. That's about it. Bunch of random guys. So there's like a handful of guys that you're going to have to resign. Are, are there any good guards on the market? I know you said a lot of, a lot of guys that will blow your socks off. Anybody yeah, good guard I, I looked at the offensive line guys, but let me tell you, I know the good guards, and they're not available. So <laughs> I'm I'm not going to say that I have some inside knowledge on the best guards in the free agent market. You see what I'm saying? Well, then no, then the question is the question becomes: Do they draft a guy, or do they I'm trade not for a guy? There, I'm not saying there isn't a good guard in the free agent market. Um, but what I'm telling you is, for the money that they would probably spend, um, and well, the, if they don't sign a a top top and, like if they don't sign like a perennial Pro Bowler left guard. Then they don't necessarily have to break the bank. No, no, that's what I'm saying. But once you get down to those guys, I'm not really, uh, you know, versed on second tier guard play in the NFL. No, well, DJ Fluker's not bad. DJ Fluker's not bad. No, um, just is he a former tackle? Did he play tackle at one point, or has he always been a guard? I can't remember. Uh, Justin Pugh, he's sometimes good. Jonathan Cooper. You guys are boring me. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's a there's a couple of guys yeah. that are, that would be worth looking at, um, yeah. but no no uh, no studs. No, we gotta go to break, gentlemen. Luke Jogel, Danny still didn't answer the question. Uh, what I'm, question? Pen, 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 I'm, I'm putting a gun to your head. You gotta pick one. Shermer Vabral. Shermer oh. Vabral. Find me a fucking coin. <laughs> I'll make a decision. Pick one, man. Uh, no, no coin flip. Just pick one. Use your noggin. I'm not using my noggin. It doesn't matter. Fuck Kay. one, kill one. <laughs> I think I'm probably gonna fuck Mike Vrabel. I mean, he is. He's, or is he gonna <laughs> fuck you? That's probably more likely. Yeah, it's probably more likely. That's gonna be the end of the show. Dan fucks Mike Vrabel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do we have coming up, gentlemen? We uh, we got to talk about uh, some Michigan State hoops. They're uh, they're they're playing a, a pretty significant rivalry game this weekend. Who is that team that they're playing? Talk a little Pistons trade rumors. Ah, yes. Stuff's going down, really po- good, possibly really, or really, nothing. Really, really good, fun ones. Uh, and uh, Dave and Dan can do the picks. We got Sign the picks. Out. Oh, you're picking anyway. Why am I picking? Because you're here. Because you're That's here. That's how it works. I'm out. Consolation prize. Sorry, don't, people. I've, I've let you down. Don't quit. Call me Mr. Two and Three. I don't know. Maybe we'll get into my feelings about Gruden going to the Raiders. Oh, Finally. Yeah. You're listening out of Mount Detroit Sports. David Faze, Jeff Mel, and myself, Dan Griffin, on SportsRadioDetroit.com. Do not go away. So don't go there. But that don't mean a nigga can't rest in the West. See some nice breasts in the West. Smoke some nice sets in the West. Y'all niggas is a mess. Think you're not going to stop. Give it L.A. props. All I got is beef with those that violate me. I shall annihilate you. Hey, this is Darren McCarty, four-time Stanley Cup champion with the Detroit Red Wings. You're listening to Out of Bounds, Detroit Sports on SportsRadioDetroit.com. You ever made eye contact with someone while they stuck a finger farther and farther up your butt? Give me one reason to stay here, and I'll turn right back around. And I'll turn right back around Said I don't want to leave you lonely Oh yeah Welcome back Out of Bounds Detroit Sports 
David Faze, Jeff Mell, and myself, Dan Griffin, invading your ear hole. As always, on SportsRadioDetroit.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever the hell you listen to podcasts. No Facebook Live tonight. We got a little bit of a late start. I had a pointless work appointment. Didn't matter. We had, a, we, had a, we had a pretty fun break, though. Watching uh, Komodo dragons eat monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. I mean, that shit is just savage. Trying to figure out whether Conor McGregor's mom was hot. <laughs> Definitely. I don't know if we actually decided. I don't think we did. I don't think we really came it's, to a conclusion. We can't. Because we, she's one of those broads where there's a lot of really, a lot of pretty decent pictures, but a lot of really bad ones. Smash or pass, man. Smash I also or pass. think that one picture I showed you where you said that you can tell like 100% how she looks like him or he looks like her, however you want to put it. Yeah. I think she also may have been drunk in that photo. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> just spitballing. You don't say. An Irish fo- an Irish uh, lady drunk? I don't think that ever happens. Whether or not Dave would bang Simone Biles. Yep. She's not big enough for you, Dave. Jesus. <laughs> She's not big enough for your liking. We can't get off this narrative. I, it's like there's <laughs> they can't you can't get past it. It's insane. You gotta, you gotta slip it in. You, no matter what no matter if he's gonna continue the joke, he has to slip it in no matter what. Let's we'll see how many consecutive days they can continue this. There's gotta be what shows. what do you think, like twenty five shows? I wouldn't say that many. <laughs> Dave wasn't here for three weeks. Okay, geez. He wasn't here for three you weeks. You guys had a lot well, of time to plan. We still referenced it a couple of times. a lot of time to plan. I will commend you on the GPS thing. That was well done. That was very <laughs> that was well Dan done. last minute, though. But, 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 but damn, can't we just, can nope. we all just get along? <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> on Dan's world. And then how hot no, Jerry Rice's daughter is. It's very attractive lady. Jesus yep. Christ. I'm not even, I want to see that turd gutter. Smash. That's what I want to see. Smash. I'd probably eat three miles of shit to get to that thing. Oh, easy. <laughs> Would you eat a whole monkey? <laughs> yeah, would you eat a monkey without chewing? <laughs> Covered in three miles of shit. God, that was that was abs. I know I keep using the word, but but it is the most accurate thing you can say. That was the most. That was an absolutely savage video. Yeah, it was. I love nature like, videos, man. Especially as as you said, Jeff, as you're listening, like you can hear the crunch. Yeah, just as every, what the fuck is oh, going God. on? Every gulp, there's a crunch. Brutality, head first. Just absolute brutality. <laughs> Big hoops game this week in yeah. an area that uh, really nobody really gives a shit about college basketball. Cause that is stupid because they should. Yeah, I got two two solid programs. Yep, not far from each other. Nope. But where I wanted to start was Dave. We had talked Monday about you know the loss at Ohio State, and I'm pretty sure Ohio State basically went and trounced Maryland tonight. I know they were up big uh, once again. Uh, I can look it up. I'm so, listening. So what I'm thinking is, A, that Maryland just really isn't nearly as good as we thought they would be. I think that's probably accurate, yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think they're that I don't think they're they're that good. But also twenty two point victory for Ohio for State. For Ohio State. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they they beat them up pretty badly. Yep. So I think we can probably pretty much eliminate Maryland from any sort of contention in anything. I think you relevance. might be able to remove Minnesota too, which is ridiculous because they, they look like shit. But Michigan State goes out and needs overtime to beat Rutgers. Yeah. Following that game. And that's two in a row now where you go, um, is this another typical January Tom is o lull? And in March that it won't matter. And maybe that's the case. But here's the thing. This was supposed to be a Tom Izzo team that wasn't supposed to have that lull, right? They were gonna they were gonna move right past that. And and, and in one of Tom Izzo's most talented teams ever, uh Certainly, since a couple of years ago, when uh, Denzel's team probably should have won the national championship. Well, the, actually, the funny thing is, is uh, if you actually want to compare it to what might have been his other most talented team, I don't think it was that team. Even though that team, you are absolutely right, should have feasibly had a chance at a title because of the landscape of of college basketball at the time and and what they had done. I think their most talented team on paper, other than this team, was that team. Uh, about four years ago where you had Keith Appling at point guard, you had Brendan Dawson, you had Draymond Green, you had Adrian Payne. That team was absolutely stacked, and they just couldn't get done. They couldn't stay healthy for the whole year, and they just could not come together. And I think that team as a, as a whole was more talented than the Denzel team of a couple is, years is, ago, is, but is that, doesn't, that, that doesn't make everything. Is part of that what Draymond Green has become? Now, he was, he's, an all-time, oh, yeah. he's an all-time Spartan, no, no question mm-hmm. about that. Draymond Green's a hell of a lot better pro than he was a college player. Mm, well, yes, he's had time to mature, but but he was pretty damn good at Michigan State. He he's I don't know if he holds any record necessarily, but he's he's right up there in, in Michigan State lore. When you look at those record board, record books, he's he's right up near the top of a lot of stats. Anyway, he well, was really good. What I was getting at 
is so let's just say let's just pretend for a second that this is just a just a typical Michigan State uh, early January lull. They'll be fine. They'll get to March, and, and they'll make a run. The problem is with those teams in the past. You know, Tom Izzo has gotten more than a few of those teams to the Sweet 16. He's gotten more than a few of those teams to the to the Elite Eight. He's gotten a few of those teams to the Final Four and a couple of those teams to the National Championship game. But every time, there's one common theme between that, and that is that Tom Izzo doesn't earn that second National Championship with any of those with any of those prior squads. And my question to you, because Dave, I can't really answer this question because I'm not a Michigan State fan. If it turns out that this is another one of those years, is that going to be enough for you? A year where they where they make a decent run but don't win? Sure. No. It's not going to be enough for you. That's no. the answer I was hoping for. That's the answer I was hoping for. Because this is a team that I even said on Monday that I still think that there's a good chance that this team's the best team that this team is the best team in college basketball. But looking at these couple of games and kind of noticing th- some things about Michigan State, it's kind of tough to put them on par with Duke now. And and I, honestly, call me a flip flopper if you want, because yes, that opinion has changed in a matter of a couple of days. But this has been a couple of games where I'm kind of seeing this this theme that when Michigan State's stars aren't performing, they don't have much behind those guys. Like who, for example, is coming off of Michigan State's bench right now uh, on a night where maybe the starters aren't playing a great game and scoring you 12, 14 points and lighting a spark under that team. Uh, can, uh, at times, it can be Matt McQuaid. Um, he hasn't. He's here. Here's the thing: that Maryland game of uh, last week was was a perfect storm of things for Michigan State. They Maryland, like you said, appears to not be anywhere near as as good as we might have thought they were. But also, Michigan State, I think, probably played their most complete game of the entire year in every single facet. I mean, they they couldn't miss. They were hitting everything. Everybody who was shooting from three was hitting from three. I mean, that was an absolute master clinic offensively. Um, and they played very well defensively too. But I think Maryland also, when you when you get down a certain point and you're and, and you're, look, it's human nature to get dejected when you're getting beat that bad. I think Maryland, I don't want to use the word gave up, but I don't think Maryland was really trying their hardest by about the 15 minute mark of that second half. I think you're basically like, all right, well, we suck. This isn't working out. We're just, let's just let's kind of just go through the motions and just get through this damn game. Don't think Mellow Trimble is yeah. carrying that team to no, a Big Ten not. title. But and, and here's the funny thing: I, I was I was I wouldn't even use the word discouraged by the Ohio State game. I was disappointed because I felt like the team didn't show up at all. And Ohio State, and, and I don't want to take credit away from Ohio State because I think Ohio State played fantastic the other night. They really did. They played a very complete game. They took Michigan State out of everything. Michigan State can start shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, because Ohio State was playing really, t- really tough uh, defense, and so I was upset about the game. But it was I was of the mindset, okay, you know what happens? On to Rutgers. There's the, no nobody you, runs the yeah, Big Ten schedule. We, we chalked it up. We chalked it up to that typical first hostile environment Big Ten loss, yep. and that's what Michigan's. And it, it, oh, they'll be fine against Rutgers. And they go out and they lay another egg against Rutgers. Now they escaped with a victory. But they lay another egg two nights in a row against Rutgers, which kind of makes you, gives you a little bit of that fear of that typical Izzo January lull here's that the, they ha- always seem to hit. Here's a problem I have um, after watching last night's game. And, and I, I do want to say this, that I, I truly believe, and this isn't, from, this isn't me saying that I think Michigan State shouldn't have handled Rutgers better. But I do think this is not the same Rutgers team we've seen. Not that they have a bunch of superstars necessarily. They got. I, I do think that that Corey Sanders kid, their point guard, is is pretty good. No, but, but if you're the best, but, if you're supposed to be, or I'm not even going to say the best team in America. If you're a top three team in America, th- th- those types of games can't happen. Well, not ag- well, not well, against well, Rutgers. Well, listen, this is. Uh, let me get to it. I think they're very scrappy. I think they've they do they've and they defend super well and they are relentless and they they've played Michigan State tough both times. However, the my biggest issue that I see after watching that game is and this is this isn't necessarily a new concept. I think it's something that's been mentioned about Michigan State before. But my biggest issue is, in fact, I think Ryan even made made mention of this when we had him on last time. We were talking about, about a little bit of Michigan State hoops. I don't know. If they have that that guy who has the killer instinct, 
And that's a problem. I, look, Miles Bridges should be that guy. We've said we've said this. Ryan said that. I mean, it's it's that's that's kind of the narrative we're going with. Miles Bridges, in for all intents and purposes, should be that guy that is going to in a close game. Look, let's say that game goes exactly the way up towards as you're getting closer to the end of the game and and and, and uh, even into the overtime. Let's say that it's just one of those games where it's a perfect storm. Rutgers is playing super well. You're not hitting your shots as well. Miles Bridges needs to come in. And say, listen, boys, this isn't going to fucking happen. We just laid a complete egg against Ohio State. Follow me. I'm going to put this. I'm going to. I'm. I'm, I'm going to put this game away, and you guys just be there to support me. Basically, what is it would be the message that I would expect to hear, and that's what it should be. That's how he should be leading this team. But but he is not, and maybe that's not his personality. And I'm not going to try to kill the kid and say and, and try to change who he is. But if you Fancy yourself a a superstar player, and I think he does. He he, but he has this super weird mentality where like he's a team for a superstar, which sounds all well and good. But look, if you're trying to be the top team in the country, you need your stud to be a fucking asshole and just go at other teams. Stop this crap where you're trying to get everybody else involved. If your team needs you to score and be the man, be the man. It's that simple. And the other problem is, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, is. I'm not exactly liking Michigan State's bench right now. I, I don't. I, it, when you have a guy like Miles Bridges and and also who's supposed to be this uh, supposed to be a college superstar, and I think he's hurt his draft stock a little bit so far this year, if you ask me. But and I don't know if that's weighing on his that's mind. Rel- that's relative. There's I guarantee you there's scouts that think his that his stock is up just because he's at, he has added a few things to his game, but he's not as he's not as it's it's weird because he has more around him this year than he had last year. But so it looks like it's not as good. But if you look at his overall numbers, they're about the same. And he actually has added a little bit of dribble penetration to his game. And I, I don't think his draft stock has really changed. To be honest with you, good or bad, I don't I, think it's. I don't think it's really changed. Either way, if he's not performing, if the rest of the starting five isn't performing, I, I there, there's there's just nobody who lights that spark off the bench for me. Now you mentioned McQuaid, but this this isn't this isn't a guy that y- y- Dave. When you see him come off the bench in the middle of a game when your team's struggling a little bit, are you getting excited? Are you you know here you know here he comes to light a spark. Now you you know you've got a guy like Tum Tum who can do that on the defensive end. Yeah, but he's you know it's four on five on the offensive end because Tum Tum can't he he couldn't hit a he couldn't hit the lake if he threw it from a dock. Uh, so you know. A couple defensive possessions, Tum Tum might maybe give you a little bit of energy, but if nobody's on the other end of the floor scoring, you know that's a concern. That's a concern for Michigan State is is, is the depth. If their starters aren't doing what they need to do, and we know come tournament time, all it's, it's one game elimination. All it takes is once, and all of a sudden, you know you're out in the second round. You're out well, in the Sweet Sixteen. Here's the thing: the way that Tom Izzo is going to run his rotation, um, Michigan State has a ton of front court depth. When it comes to bigs that can that can play some D and 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 can body up on guys and, and can cause a problem, you know, down low, so I'm not worried about that necessarily. But uh, there, there's gonna he's gonna have to play it in such a way that uh, he never has a moment where you don't have at least one of Cassius or Josh Langford or Miles Bridges on the floor. And here's the other thing: Cassius kind of showing showing himself as a as a bit of a defensive liability as well. He is. No, he is. He he has he has been since day one last year, and he's going to continue to be. It's that's really a, that's a, it's, it's a downfall. It's really rearing its ugly it's head. It's a downfall. I mean, because and that's that's the issue that you have at that spot because you know defensively you're going to pull out Cassius, throw in Tum Tum. Now you can't score at the other end. Well, but the other thing is not every point. Last night was rough. Because that kid for Rutgers, Corey Sanders, is very athletic. He's he's bigger than Cassius, and uh, and he uh, he he was. He, I mean, it didn't matter who was on him. He was deking guys out and 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 you know crossing guys over. And he had a hell of a game last night. Uh, you know that was that was that game was a little bit of a of an outlier in terms of of how good or bad Cassius is as a defender, but. Case in point being that if you watch the games all year, he's not necessarily that bad, but he is, in essence, a liability. That's absolutely accurate. Either way, there are concerns. They that, are. No and, team's perfect. But but what, what 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 it sounds like I got out of you, and this is what I was hoping you would say, because it means you've you've come of age. Uh, national championship or bust. 
Well, this team has everything they need to do that. So yeah, they should. They should. They should be able to do. I don't think there's any. To me, there's no team in college basketball that, from top to bottom, I think I truly believe should be able to actually compete with and beat Michigan State in a, in in the tournament, except Duke. It's the only one. It's the only one that I think it rivals them. Fair enough. And they fun, and they may meet them. That'd be a fun and if they do, it would be very game, fun. wouldn't it? That'd yeah. be very fun. interesting. And before we get to to the uh, to the to the two local schools playing each other this weekend, I have got to talk about the way that Michigan Purdue game ended. That was an absolute abomination, and it's not just because Michigan lost the game. I do think Michigan was robbed twice in that game. The problem that I have is taking seven fucking minutes yeah. to review a <laughs> just a yeah. typical out-of-bounds play on a play that traditionally, that ball's going back to the offense. And for anybody who might not know what I'm talking about, it was just a simple drive to the basket. Somebody comes, I don't even remember who slapped the ball out. Somebody from Purdue comes over, slaps the ball out of, who had the, I don't even remember who had the ball. It doesn't yeah. even matter. <laughs> slaps, the ball out of, it. slaps the ball out of Michigan players' hands and it goes over to baseline. Traditionally, that's all. That ball's always going back to the offense, even if somehow the, the offensive player still had his hand on the ball at the end. That defensive player knocked that ball away. That ball is always going back to the offense. So you take seven fucking minutes as an officiating crew, and well done, Gene Steratour. Yes, he was the one officiating that game, and comes back and says. Two frames showed that Michigan player yeah. touched the ball. Two frames. Do you understand how much time that is? Yeah. That's like you can't a see millisecond. It. Yeah, you can't see it with the with the naked eye. And if that if you can't, that you can't even see it in a regular slow motion in the naked eye. No. You have to go frame by frame. You have to go frame by frame. That is not what replay was intended for. I'm sorry. Like, if that is what replay is going to become, get it the fuck out of my sports. I would honestly rather have an official make a wrong call and live with that than deal with that garbage. Because what's the point? There is only one sport to me. and I, It's it's stuff like this and, and, and the long delays in the NFL, college football, isn't quite as bad. But it's stuff like this that's just making me think, I just want to get rid of replay. I'm done with it. It's it's becoming more of a nuisance, and it's ruining fucking games. There is only one sport right now, and it was the last to adopt a replay, that I think is really legitimate, and that's baseball. Because baseball is a game that it's cut and dry. It is or it isn't. Yeah. It was a home run or it wasn't a home run. He was safe or he was out. It was a ball or it was a strike. You can use replay in baseball. But there is... Got, I mean... To go narrowing it, taking seven minutes to narrow it down to frames, and then Michigan gets the ball back and gets screwed again on a ticky tack foul by Mo Wagner down at the other end of the floor, and then Haas goes to the line, drains one out of two, and Michigan loses the basketball game. They got screwed twice in two seconds. Well, seven minutes. That's a seconds. fake dude, by the way. Haas. Like Haas. Holy shit. He's a. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me finish your point. You can He's a monster. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, that was it. I, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about th- th- this replay. Because, it, honestly, I'd be saying the same thing if it was the other way. If just Michigan, get, yeah, it's just a little too... It's, it's just a little too... Th- this isn't what replay's for. No. Uh, uh, but look, look I, I can't speak to that game because I didn't see... I, I wasn't even home to see what was going on with that game. It was a great basketball game but that was ruined by seven minutes of idiocy. I was, I was trying to follow along with the score and, and some of the gameplay on Twitter and, and via like uh, you know Yahoo Sports app and everything, but I, you know, I wasn't actually available to watch it. But as far as the the argument against replay goes, um, I don't have to know or I don't have to have experienced what happened in this game to know that I a thousand percent agree with you. It's it's become. I mean, look, the the crazy thing to me is, like, it's become a point where, you know, replay is supposed to be a a added benefit that, that helps uh, make the calls that are – could maybe go either way, right? Or, in, in or to fix a play to get a to get a call right that an official clearly got wrong. Right, that's what I think replay is for. Right, it, it, it's not meant to break down semantics of two frames in the Correct. course of a basketball game. Correct, that's not what it's for. The problem is, is it's becoming the the replay when done improperly or when used improperly, which it seems like is happening more often than not anymore. 
becomes the story of a basketball game. We and, don't know what it catches. The problem. We don't know who touched the ball yeah. last. That's why I'm t- get it all. Get it out of all sports. And leave it in baseball because baseball it makes sense. You're never going to get that shit wrong. True. Not in baseball. He's out or he's safe. It's a home run or it's not. That's it. It's fair or it's foul. One of the, you know that's one of the beautiful things about baseball. That's one of the best things about baseball. Hockey's close. They're you, close, but not. They're still not quite as cut and dry as baseball. Well, really, the only close. thing to review in hockey is whether the puck went over the goal line. Well, that's true. It but, either did or but, it didn't. But now they're doing this objective uh, goalie interference shit, and it's. I mean, it's. It's no, gotten. It's no. gotten. L- See penalties, penalties in any sport, in any situation, penalties, fouls, no matter what it is. But you, you know always what referees. You know what discretion. I'm saying, right? I know what you're saying. They're they're making calls on whether goals should be allowed or disallowed because of of potential goal interference. No, if if they come ridiculous, if the official, if the referee doesn't, I can't call believe you can even challenge it. If if that's if, the problem, it's it's allowable for a coach to challenge no. goal interference. That shouldn't be a thing. No, see, that's garbage. Shouldn't be a thing. Penalties in every single sport should be referees' discretion. Yeah, wrong, right or wrong. Because I don't care. What's the point of having a referee? That's what they're there for is to enforce the rules of the game. Cuz my my favorite my favorite thing that's happening in the NHL now is when one of those plays is challenged, when a goal is challenged for goal interference. And that's literally like that's the way it's called. It's the coach is challenging the ruling on the ice uh based on, you know, a goal interference call or lack thereof. And my favorite is when when the, when the coach challenges and it doesn't get overturned and then they act all uppity like, how the hell could you do that? This shouldn't even have been a discussion in the first place. Whether no, it was wrong because, in the first place doesn't because, matter. Because it's the fact it was called on the ice, let it go. And, and the referee gets to put an, in a, a second, they get to second guess themselves by looking at slow motion replay for a penalty. You cannot tell whether there's a penalty or not on slow motion replay. That is a live action call that you make. And that's it. Get it out. I'm done with it. Yeah, check. I'm done you, with it. You can use in hockey. You can check high. You can check uh, a uh, uh, high stick goal, right? Yep. You can check that because that's valid. Because at times, in, 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 in you know, in, in regular gameplay, we all know how fast hockey moves. It can be tough to tell whether a, a player stick was actually above uh, the crossbar or not. That's fine. Or to actually determine whether a puck went over the goal line or not. Those are both valid. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Other than that. I don't really know a whole lot of use for it in hockey. Yeah, everything else is so. Uh, I shouldn't say is so. Should everything else should not be subjective. Everything else should be referee's discretion. If it's wrong, it's wrong, and you live with it. But don't fucking challenge it. It's the stupidest shit ever. It, it's that's not the way the game was meant to be played. Yep. Anyway, that we got off topic there. Michigan, Michigan kind of. State this weekend yeah. uh, in East Lansing, and, and it's one of those games. Now, honestly, I think Michigan State struggles. And Michigan's uh, kind of uh, uh, moving up the totem pole. Yeah, kind of made this game a little bit more interesting on Saturday, hasn't it? Well, I'll, t- I'll say this: Michigan is having another typical Michigan season under Beeline, which is when they are well with an addendum because I do think they have a little bit of a, of a wild card uh, that they can throw in there, and it's a guy that you've talked about multiple times, Jeff, and that's I- uh, Isaiah Livers is playing fantastic. Um, I think that Michigan is another is having another year where typically under Beeline, if they are hitting their outside shots, they are very very difficult to play. Of course they are. And if yeah. they if they don't hit their outside shots, are they a guaranteed to lose? No, no. they have, but, they have but, other ways to but, win. But it makes it more difficult for them. Yeah. Here's what I think it makes this game interesting though, based on the way these two teams have played and based on the way that the, I think Michigan is honestly a bit of a matchup nightmare for Michigan State. And there's a reason why that is. Because, like you said, Dave, as typical beeline teams do, taking that outside shot. And the issue that you have... See, Michigan and Michigan State, are, are, are it's it's almost like a styles make fights kind of game here. Because Michigan's, Michigan State's obviously got the size inside. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to, they're going to, you know, they're going to beat the shit out of Michigan down low. There's no question yeah. about that. But the... the the stylistic differences there could work to Michigan's advantage as well because now what Michigan's going to do on the offensive end of I'm the listening. floor I got to grab a beer I'm listening now they're just going to they're going <laughs> to force they're going to force that Michigan state size to the perimeter right so you're either go, you either have to let Michigan take those outside shots and knock them down or miss them or you're going to have to Try and stretch to the outside defensively, which is going to do what? It's going to leave an open highway to the basket. And now, what we're seeing out of Michigan and Isaiah Livers is the one guy that you look at particularly. 
you give him that open lane to the basket, he's going to score. So Michigan State's got to kind of find a way to figure out which way they're going to defend Michigan. Are they going to let him take the shots? Yeah. Or are they going to are they going to stretch Michigan State out and get those and get those open open looks to the inside? Well, I, yeah, I, I I feel like that's what, what makes well, Michigan a nightmare. Here's for the thing, Mich- Michigan State has actually defended the three point line very well so far this year. Um, however, I think if I'm Tom Izzo, uh, I'm I think my my game plan is to try to force as much as possible uh, Michigan to have to try to get the ball inside into the paint. Because because if you force them to do that, I think Michigan State absolutely has the advantage. But the problem is, they're going to be stretched out. So they, so there's going there's going to be open looks to the inside towards the basket. That's the thing. They're going to pull. They're the the idea is to pull Michigan State size to the three point line. Yeah, but here the funny thing is, is Michigan State actually has a couple of bigs that are really good at defending out that far. Jaron Jackson's one of them because he's just that very athletic. And he has no problem being out at the three point line guarding somebody. And Gavin Schilling's the other one. You know, there's but Gavin Schilling's been an, a, a, an interesting player at Michigan State his whole career. I think people had higher expectations. Another for guy him. that I feel like he's been there for a decade. Yeah, well, yeah, well, because he, he missed an entire year last year, so he's got another year. But anyway, he's another guy that he, I think there were some people that had higher expectations for him when he got there. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I think I was one of them. I expect him to be a little bit better. But what he is really good at and has been really good at since he came to Michigan State is he's very good on the defensive end of the floor because he moves really well laterally for a big guy. He's a, he's a very agile and athletic big man with really good size. He's he's not, you know, Jaron Jackson is athletic, but he's lean, right? Gavin Schilling is pretty athletic, and he's got plenty of, of body size to, to, you know, to bang around and, and body yeah. guys up. So it's very interesting. So it's going to – I am going to be very curious to see – uh, wh- how this game plays out because, it, you know, in, like I said, in a perfect world, I think you you try to force Michigan to uh, to get away from their outside shooting because it's very simple. If they if they get a chance to hit some open outside shots, that hurts you a lot more than them trying to bang down low um, and possibly picking up some fouls here and there. So it, I don't know exactly how Michigan State's going to try to play this, but. I will say I don't think as good as I think Michigan State is, and you know you you've said it, I've said it, uh, Jeff. I, don't, I know you haven't actually said it, but I, I don't know how you feel about it. But I I, I do think Michigan State is either one A or one B in terms of top teams in the nation. When you break everything down, I, I genuinely believe that. But I think Michigan, if you get into a shooting match with them, yeah, I think Michigan might have the advantage. Unfortunately for Michigan State. Because if, if they're hitting their shots, that's a freaking scary and not, team. And not to mention, Beeline is good against Izzo. They have, they have, in the, you know, they've, um, Michigan's beat them. Way you know, less talented yeah, oh, teams. Sure. You know, in the recent past. So it's not like, like, Beeline knows a way to get, you know, knows at least, so, I mean, they're competitive games, but they know somewhat how to get um, under Michigan State's skin in a way. So, I mean, I, I I love the freshman. I think Mo Wagner is is, is playing great. He's got. What great... the fact that Xavier Simpson basically played like a wet noodle for the first half of the season, lost yeah. his damn starting job. Not he's playing a little bit better basketball yeah. nowadays. And that helps, and that helps a ton too. Won his job, and the, and the freshman being you know seventeen, eighteen games in or whatever, nineteen games in. I I still um, think that right. that that helps them a lot too because I think finally. They were both both Pool and Livers were both guys that like everyone's like all right these guys got talent and they're going to be pretty good players but it's probably going to be year two and no one I, I don't think anybody thought you know one half of the way through the season they're going to be playing meaningful minutes making a big impact for this team against a really good Purdue team we'll see how they do against Michigan State um, and you know they'll probably make a sp- splash in the Big Ten tourney and I, I see them as a tournament team so. Oh, it's certainly a tournament. Team. Yeah, so I mean, I, I just, <laughs> I, I, I'm happy with the way it is now, and and I, I, Mich- as long as Michigan can play the defense they've been playing lately, and hit a good percentage of their threes, I'll tell that's, you this. that's really it. They don't have to play well down line. I, I, if, if they if, find a way to beat Michigan State, especially after they had played against Purdue, you, you're certainly going to see them in the rankings. It's just where, where are they going to be? Well, I, honestly, I'm surprised. I, unless I'm mistaken, Ohio State did not enter the rankings after beating MSU today. 
which I was very no, shocked you, you, by. You play a you play a close game against the number five team in the country. You at, lose by one in, point in their and, house. And, Oh, with at, Purdue, at, with at, Purdue. at, at yeah, yeah, home, Purdue. and then you go and you beat another top five team in the country on the road. You're definitely going to be ranked after that. There's no way. There's no sure. way you can be held out of the rankings after that, especially with with how hot they've been and the record that they have. Yeah, I I, I can tell you this. I, I if if I know one thing about Tom Izzo and the way he he likes to coach a basketball game, the one thing that I can say for sure is I know that a big part of his game plan against Michigan this this weekend is going to try to be, and not because he truly believes that it's going to happen, but just because it's just the way that Izzo coaches basketball, He's go, they're going to try to out-physical Michigan. Yeah. Now, I don't know how well that's going to play out because we've already seen a couple times this year that Michigan State has had their issues with being out-physical themselves, and maybe that's just a testament to how good Tom Izzo has been for so long that all these other teams come in and, they're, and the, the number one thing on the board for the op- opposing coaches, we're going to out-physical them. We have to play as physical a brand of basketball as we can because that's how Michigan State plays. Um, I mean, even just look at Rutgers the other night. Rutgers, you know, Michigan State has been a very good rebounding team forever, including this year, and Rutgers out rebounded them. That's one of those things. It seems like any game where Michigan State gets out rebounded and or it, that that rebounding margin is actually close is a game that they struggle to win or struggle that that's just a struggle for them to play in. Because I feel like those team, because of the way Michigan State is coached, when a team comes in with it, with it even semi equal physicality to them, it's a it's a surprise. Um, so if Mich- if Michigan can come home can come in with some physicality, and I, they have all the all the means to do it. Yeah, especially uh, on the defensive end. Yeah, if they, if, if they come in with some physicality, line. this could be a long game. I, look, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not comfortable. There's no way. There's no, <laughs> no. way I'm comfortable. I, I mean, I'm not even be, close. I wouldn't be comfortable if I were you either. Not even but close. I'm not like like I'm like Michigan State is so daunting though. To that's me. because like, the, I have that's, this. That's because idea Michigan State in this situation is the team with something to lose. Yeah, but Michigan State to me is like daunting. Like I'm like I don't think they have a chance to win well, okay. unless they really hit a good percentage well, of their threes. I, I, I like. It, I think this game's going to go one of two ways. Either Michigan State is pissed. Yep. And they're going to come out with their fucking hair, so with, their, should with, be with all their yeah. pubes on fire, and absolutely. They don't have any redheads, Dan. No, they run, run them out of the gym, or or or, the, or, or, or we're going to have a close game, and I mean close game down to the down to the last mm-hmm. fucking possession. Yeah, that's that kind of close game. You know, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about middle ground where Michigan State wins this game by seven to thirteen. In there, it's either going to be twenty, or it's going to be two. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what we're looking at. So, um, I don't know. I guess we can pick it here before we get to the actual picks. For sure. What do you? Who do you like and by how many? I like Michigan State by five. Fair. That's where I'm comfortable. Dave. I'm going to stick with my boys, but I'm I'm right about almost in lockstep with Jeff. I was. It's funny as he, as he was saying that, my brain was Michigan State by seven. So I'm going to say Michigan State by seven, but I. It's gonna, it's gonna be close. Yeah. I'll say I'm, I'll say Michigan State by two on the last possession. We'll see in the in part of the five. A Michigan miss part, on the last possession. Yeah, I mean, gonna be part of that five is free like throws. Free throws. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that could be. That could be. Either way, we we all we all think we're gonna have a close game here, but I could totally see it going the other way. It's too. it's weird. I I get super nervous watching those games as as an avid fan, but I also prefer those games. Oh, of course! Like, like it is the yeah. most nerve wracking thing, That's and why I get you love so sports. pissed off. But That's I just, but it's so much more entertaining than watching a game where your team's up by twenty. You're just like, oh, okay, well, I guess this game's over. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, shall we get to the picks? Sure, sure. We don't have any college games this week, or or until next season. So we start. We're only gonna, we're only doing four, aren't we? Yeah, that's it. There's only four football games. Well, only two next week. Now I can pick with my heart. You surely can, Jeff Mel. Jeff, Jeff, basically out of the running here. Yeah. After last week, with myself going four and one, Dave three and two, and Jeff two and three, putting the standings as follows: Dan in first place, forty-four thirty and one; Dave forty-one thirty-three and one; and Jeff. At 500, at 37, 37, and 1. I've actually done pretty well this year, but yet it's still not even enough. You are, uh, you're just a consistent second place. I'm either in last or first. You ain't first, you're last. If you ain't and, first, you're last. And Jeff, Hell, I was and, high when I said that. And Jeff's <laughs> either in first or last, so you're just the, you're, you're the guy in the middle. 
delightful day. L- lull you to sleep, man. Which of these playoff games would you like to start with? Hey, man, you're, you're running this ship. Fine! We'll start in Philadelphia. Probably the least exciting of the four. Yeah. Well, eh. no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's one that's uh, a little lopsided. Yep, the Atlanta Falcons going to take on the Fighting Foles. Foles is? Foles, Foles is. is. Atlanta. They are giving up three on the road at Philadelphia. We got a home dog here. Who do you like, Jeff? We'll let you go first since you don't matter. Uh, <laughs> give me Atlanta. I think Nick Foles is uh, going to fold. You know what I'm saying? Hey! <laughs> I see what a little, you. A little too easy. I on that see one. what you did but, there. Uh, yeah, I, he he started off hot, four touchdown passes in the first game, and then since then he's been. Well, didn't he, didn't he come in in, re- in relief duty in the first game? Yeah, I'm that's sure. That's why backups always yeah. do that shit in relief duty. No, no, he played a full game and he threw four touchdown passes, but then after that it was garbage city. Also, uh, I think that uh, being out being out in the cold is not going to be good for Atlanta, but they have the run game. And that's going to be huge. So give me a line. Dave? It's actually a tough one to choose. Um, it's funny because with Carson Wentz in there, I, I would have picked Philly to be my NFC champion. I think most people would have. Um, but without him, they're just a different team. Um, it's, you know, it goes back to the whole adage that the, 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 in the NFL, a quarterback is it's the, the difference between a good team and a, and a bad team. Um but, you know, after watching last week and their conviction and the way that they played, God, I, I think I got to go with Jeff on this. I think I got to take Atlanta. I think that they're pissed off. I this, think that I think they're ready to go. This one's easy for me. Give me the Falcons. Nick Foles, that's all I got to say. <laughs> Give me the Falcons. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, though, Jeff, was that uh, Mike... Dave and myself made a, a, a friendly beer oh, wager yeah. on Monday. I know, I heard, but I don't remember what it was. Your rep- oh, we picked our representative out of the AFC. I love the Saints. Oh, all right. I love their matchup. And who did you, who did you take? I uh, took Minnesota because 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 Mike went on a limb and took took Atlanta. Took Atlanta. So the only so you remaining guys team is the Eagles. I'm, we're not going to saddle you with the Eagles. You don't have to be in the unless you want to get no, in no, on the spot no, and I'm, take the I'm Eagles. I'm fine. Because I love that uh, musical chair, fourth team out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like that. But of, uh, okay, so who would your pick be then? Out of the, to represent the NFC of the four teams remaining. To represent the NFC. Oh yeah. yeah. Um. I don't know how you can't love the Saints. Yeah, I'll probably go with the Saints. That's They're playing what I'm really good defense about. right now. With Drew Brees and a really good defense. Well, not to mention, look at what look shot. at what the Saints did this weekend. They no. didn't have that running game this weekend, no. and Drew Brees just goes out there and just starts slinging dimes all and over. It doesn't the damn matter yard. if they play in Atlanta or if they play in New Orleans, uh, in and they play in New Orleans in the dome. So I would think they'd beat Atlanta. That's what it, everything indoor. sets up for the Saints. Yep. The, I mean, they're 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 on the road at Minnesota this week. However. That sets up well for him. If you can find a way to scrape by Minnesota, in my opinion, you're probably going to get a home game. You're going to get another home game because Atlanta's coming to your place when they go out and beat Philly. So, sets up great for New Orleans. Uh, Let's move on. Well, well, fuck, let's just go to that game. The Saints getting three and a hook on the road at Minnesota. You boys already know who I'm taking. I'm taking the Saints in this one, Not not only to beat that three, but to win this ball game, and I just gave you every reason why. Give me the Saints. I as well will take the Saints, and we know who Dave's taking. Give me, give me the line. Ooh, New Orleans getting getting a field goal plus an extra half point. Um, Minnesota can win by a field goal, Dave. Yeah, I know. I'm doing the math in my head. <laughs> It's hard, don't, don't, it's don't, hard hurt, don't hurt yourself. Yeah. It's already happened. It's too late. That half point really breaking your balls. It does, man. That half point does that all the time. Yep. That's probably the most intriguing game of the weekend, I think. Give me Minnesota. Oh, boy. Trying to, you, you trying to make that catch up, or do you really think Minnesota's going to be I'm able taking, to... I'm taking Minnesota. I know. I got but... Minnesota by six. Okay. 
I was just asking. Okay. This beer is so good. I mean, it doesn't matter. Jeff's out, so I don't really give a shit. Yeah. And and I don't you really can, know that you I gotta can beat him. You can. Yeah. You're only down by three games with six games left to go. I got. I got to make you up. Definitely ground here. can tie him. For yeah, sure. which means I got to take. I got to yeah. take some chances now. Yep. Take Minnesota. I don't know that t- taking Minnesota is necessarily taking a chance. No, it's not. I just love the Saints right it's now. It's just going against yeah. you. Is yeah. all that means. It's a good game. Someone's going to go. gonna get a game out of that it's one. It's a good game to go against me. Hmm. Well, both of these last two are pretty lopsided. I feel like we should have left that Saints Minnesota game for last. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we start in the ketchup bottle? Where the Jaguars head to take on Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jacksonville getting seven and the hook on the road at Pittsburgh. That's a tough line right there. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, I don't think Ben Roethlisberger is going to be fooled again by that Jacksonville defense. He's at home. I don't care. Le'Veon Bell's a monster. They get Antonio Brown back, correct? Yes. That, that I believe, is true. Yes. Yes. That defense is really good. They're at home in the cold, outdoors. Blake Bortles is terrible. Give me the Pittsburgh Steelers. Blake Bortles has more playoff wins than uh, Matthew Stafford, by the way. I don't know if you guys do that. So does Marcus Mariota. Yep. Who would you like in this one, Dave? Actually, you know what? I'll go first. I'll give you you a shot. I'll give you the opportunity. (sighs) This is tough for me to say. God damn, is that Jacksonville defense good, and it's being wasted with Blake Bortles at quarterback. But it's Roethlisberger at home with some rest. I'm actually having a tough time with this one. Because cause couldn't you see this game being like a 13-7 win for the Steelers? No. Really? Not outside in the cold in the playoffs with Blake Portals. <laughs> well, that's that's okay. That's why that's why Jacksonville's only scoring seven. Yeah, but I can de- I definitely see uh, this defense Steelers getting like Ben Roethlisberger. We could is find angry. out. We could find out three years down the line that this Jacksonville team has an all time great defense. Like it's headed that direction. Yes, but ben the question Roethl- is, are we a little too early to expect that in the playoffs? Yes, it's exactly what I'm saying. I'm not. Well, that's talk- your opinion. I'm not Jeff. trying to talk you into it. It's your decision. I really don't God. know. I really make a, don't know. Make a damn pick. Seven and a half. life or death. <laughs> All right, fine. I'm taking the Steelers. <laughs> Steelers. 17. Jaguars. Nine. They don't even get in the end zone. Still a pretty low scoring game. Be taking Jacksonville, Dave. <laughs> well, I'm torn because I, I really just picked Pittsburgh to paint Dave in a corner because I knew he wanted to pick Pittsburgh. <laughs> I mean, I, at this point in time, I like I'm I'm almost in a spot where I have to just take a chance on a team that I don't even really believe is the right team to pick. You can pick the same. You can pick in, over the next this week and the next two weeks. I have to pick three games can, opposite of Dan. Yeah. And as of now, all. but it might be four after tonight, after this week. We'll so what see. do you have so far? You're both opposite on the last game. We're, op- we're opposite on the previous game, yeah. So what if he the, wins that, then the, I... In the first game, you picked the same? We picked the same. All right. Oh, man. I don't think... Uh, I really was sort of... I think fight. it's easier to pick the same now. No, I was It's f- easier to... Well, the other thing is, I, I wish yeah, it's I, easier to pick the same now because it's also e- like in the Super Bowl, you're going to have two good teams in the Super Bowl. I don't know. I don't know what the line is on that New England Tennessee game either because if it's a super I'll big give it line, to, I'll give it to you right now. All right, it's it's uh, New New England by thirteen and a half. Uh, give me. There's a seven and a half line on the, that that Jacksonville Steelers game, right? Yep. I was legitimately torn over this. I don't think it's going to be a terrible 
uh, option for you to go ahead and pick the Jags here. I'm not trying to throw you off. Pick, 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 pick Pittsburgh. I mean, if you I want. just, I just don't think. If you're that confident I, in the Steelers winning by seven, I and just half. don't think the Titans are going to do anything against the Steelers or against the, the the Patriots. Sorry, I just that game just has disaster in all over it you know, to me. You know who I got? Yeah. Um, Shall I just write you down for New England right now? Yeah. Okay. Send them all the way through. They're going to ask me next week what I, who I want to win. <laughs> Thirteen and a half. That's a huge fucking line. Anyway, Dave still hasn't picked this game yet. <laughs> Fudge Ruckers, uh, give me. Uh, I got three more games that I can choose from. Uh, give me Jacksonville. I could be the one. I don't I'm know. Just, I'm just. I'm going on a, a, a small limb at I this point. I was legitimately torn. I see this being a low-scoring affair. All right, so we already know now Tennessee headed to Foxborough to take on the Patriots. Tennessee getting 13 and a hook on the road. Jeff Mel's got the New England Patriots. This one, it should be, in most cases, a no-brainer to take the Tennessee Titans. But I got a funny feeling, with that big of a spread in the NFL, in a playoff game, I got a feeling Vegas knows something. They got to know something. I mean, unless this, you know, supposed reported turmoil in the Patriots organization is legitimate and really, really bad, Vegas has to know something. I'm taking New England here at 13 and a half. You're smart, man. New England 31, Tennessee 10. Now Patricia's just going to... Build himself a legacy over the next couple of games. Taking New England in this one as well, Dave. Yeah, I am. I, I figured. I think that was a good spread to get back on him. Though. Thirteen and a half. I mean, come on. That's that's a huge number in the yeah. NFL, especially in a playoff game. When you see a number that big, yep, yeah, it's crazy. Vegas knows something's going. on. I wouldn't touch that game with a ten foot pole in real life. No, no of course not. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, before we end the show, one of the things we haven't mentioned here tonight, Pistons, with some trade rumors happening about an hour before we started the show. Well, there's, well, there's been multiple trade rumors over the last couple days. But the big one coming tonight, and I, I, I tell you what, I have the hardest of erections if this trade, if 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 this if this gentleman were traded, I don't even care what for. Give me some old dish towels. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Stanley Johnson being chopped around. One of those um, uh, boys who uh, squeegees the floor after people fall down. Yes, <laughs> whatever you need. <laughs> I'll, I'll, take some, I'll take some new uniforms for the janitors. Whatever, the whatever floor, it is. The floor sweeper. The the the, the uh, custodians, if you will. Is that the proper term? Is that the proper nomenclature? We're not supposed to say janitor anymore, are we? Why? Is it offensive? It's custodian. Custodian, dick. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd love it. I don't care what you trade him for. Stanley Johnson is garbage. Yeah, he's not very good. <laughs> he's one of those players that's going to have a uh, um, uh, a career because he can play defense, but in today's NBA, if you can't score, get off my court. Yeah, he's just holding a roster spot for this team that needs needs some help. What would you like to see him traded for, David Faze? I mean... Some of... Uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson's nose hairs. I'd take them. Um, a year, a year. I, <laughs> oh, I'd take them. Put them in a milkshake. What kind of cap number they got? A year supply of, <laughs> of thunder put sticks. Them in a milkshake <laughs> of thunder sticks. Yeah, for the team. Yeah, the thing no, that you, you meant to say thunder thighs. Oh, you set yourself <laughs> up for that one. I saw that coming <laughs> that like a was, mile away. No, and nobody got to see Dave's face. He just got. He just. He yeah. just had that goddamn it face. <laughs> <laughs> Just a fl- year supply of thunder thighs for David Fane. One of these days, I'm throwing this Viper's puck right through your teeth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what's funny? Right is through that, your teeth. That's an autographed Viper's puck, and we have no idea who yeah. autographed it. No. Uh, Sergey Samsonov. It's uh, Sean Malpy. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk Malpy's cousin. <laughs> that's his brother. <laughs> is it? Yes. Lou, 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 Lou. <laughs> that was a real person. I was not making that big of a joke. It wasn't just yeah. making a person up. Autographed by Darren Banks. I'm sure by the end of the weekend we'll have really. You guys will have some really good pissing stuff for Monday. 
Probably. It'll be hot. Only if this trade goes through. Well, I mean, we we got we still got another what three weeks, three yeah. and a half weeks before the trade deadline. Yeah, so true. there's a lot of time for things to happen, but. Um, it, it, you kind you kind of get the sense whether it's Stanley Johnson or somebody else. Smoke, you kind of get the sense that the Pistons are going to do something. There's going to be a deal made because typically speaking, positive. the Pistons like I know that a lot of their deals like even like if you if you take like the Reggie Jackson deal for instance, their deals kind of kind of came uh, out of the woodworks very late. Like you, they, there wasn't a whole lot yeah. of rumblings about it, but it's very rare that a team is. This rumored into it's and it's not since it's the reason that I think it's different is it's not necessarily a specific guy. I know that we're talking about Stanley Johnson right now and that came out tonight, but there hasn't been as much discussion about a particular player that they are either uh, after yeah. or that they are offering. It's just been kind of a a massive yep. grouping of rumors about that just that they're interested Bunch, uh, in making a deal. Yeah, I've seen um, going okay. They're trying to shop Stanley Johnson. Um, they're also trying to sh- shop Reggie Jackson. I've also seen teams have serious interest in Luke Kennard. That's basically where it's. I don't know if I really want to cheer Luke this fast. Stanley, no, I'm, uh, Stanley, I'm fine. No, and it's it, you're really just walking that tightrope of you know on well, one, you si- what, one side are you building for the future? Two, what could you get? Yeah. what could you get for him? You do understand you know what, what I Luke Kennard is, don't you? Just another. Stan Van Gundy role player type draft pick when he could have had a, a potential superstar uh, in the in in said draft. I don't know if Luke's a, if Luke is a role player. I think Luke can be can absolutely be a starter in this league. He just I feel like Stan handcuffs his own guys. Yeah, he doesn't give guys the minutes they should been, get. And since he's he been forced into playing, much, he's been really good. Yeah, he spends too much time drafting for a system that's not going to work. In I don't think Stan NBA. has a system. I think he does. We saw it in four Orlando. The 4-1. and one. Yeah, we saw it in Orlando. We're seeing it here, and it worked in Orlando because, well, for one thing, Dwight Howard was a fucking freak then. Yeah. He's a but, freak now. Have you seen him, what he's been doing this year? He looks well, ridiculous. That's true. Yeah, he's, he's like crossing people up and reverse jamming and stuff. I'm like, where was this for the last seven years? Yeah, he's, had, he's had himself a, a, a different type of year than we've seen. Good for him. Charlotte sucks. He's trying, so to, he's trying, to, he's trying to do the same thing with a lower caliber of player. Now, I've, I've given Andre Drummond a lot of credit. I think he's improved a lot. I still think he's got some maturity issues. But he's not fucking Dwight Howard in 2009 or 2010 or whatever the hell it was. He ain't that guy. So you can't keep trying to draft pieces for this 1-4 or 4-1 system when you have the opportunity to get guys that are potential superstars. That's a one th- issue I have with Stan. I think he's a good basketball coach. I certainly like how candid he is. I like him as a dude. But right now his, 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 his skills as president of this basketball team, his front office presence, I'm sorry, I'm not impressed with it. I'm not impressed with no, him. No, he's, he's made some. He's made you know. You know, the thing for me that has been the biggest mistake is, as you just mentioned, that some of the draft decisions have been bad. He hasn't. He has not gotten the right guys. They've mis- basically mi- all been bad. He's missed guys. That's just the the plain fact. So, we'll see about the trade deadline. Can he fix this thing? I don't know. Well, and it's, it is going to be interesting to no, see the, no, can, the he fix, can he make them better? Yeah, and we'll it, see. Because it is going to be interesting to see whether or not. Um, they are able to kind of bridge the gap or if they're just going to completely say, okay, well, we're, we're playing for now and the future isn't important to us right now. Because to be honest with you, if they do that, uh, even if they have an, a decent year this year, look, even if they even if they get a couple of good, decent guys, they're not, they're not going to win this year. And in my in my opinion, if you tear down the, the poten- potential future for – you know, a few more wins and a, and a little bit better playoff spot. I think you fail. Yeah, and and here's a, to go right along with that. Here before we close out, that goes right along with the fact that the Warriors aren't going to be the Warriors forever. LeBron James isn't going to be around a whole lot longer. Not at the level that he is. Get ready for what's going to happen when those two things are gone. That's what I want to see. Go get Kimball Walker. <sighs> well, how long can you keep him around? That's a question. Plenty. Anyway, if you're willing to spend, we've got to terminate. Tom Gore says he is. So well, all put right. your money where your mouth is. That's fair enough. We've got to terminate this podcast for David Faze, Jeff Mel, myself, Dan Griffin. Please go to sportsradiodetroit.com. Check out all the other fantastic content. Getting a little more writing going on as 
Roger bringing in some slave labor and with, with the interns. Go, Roger. <laughs> Shows abound on sportsradiodetroit.com. Go check out some of the other great content in the podcast section as well. But until Monday, David Faze, Jeff Mel, myself, Dan Griffin, sportsradiodetroit.com. We are out of here. So when I say I'm balling, that don't mean that I'm playing, man. All my diamonds talking, you can see what they saying, man. See, I've been drinking champagne all night.